Okay. So, uh, so, uh, so let's look at ingenuity just real quick. Attendance log six. Okay, so this is where we are on ingenuity. Okay, I have a couple people that haven't gone there yet. We need to spend some time on ingenuity, just 30 minutes. Okay, I'll give you some time this week to do it in class, but there are some people that have not gone to Edgenuity yet, FYI. Okay. Um, and then, of course, you've got, well, let's just check it real quick. Okay, so what, what happened? Oh. Okay, so ingenuity 30 minutes. Don't forget about your Ed puzzle. We're going to do the textbook in class and then your packet, Math Minute, Math Detective, Sudoku's extra credit, and your quiz. Okay, so we left off in our math book on page 305. Okay, so 305 at the top, we're doing independent practice. Okay, so we're graphing ratio tables, rates and ratio tables. The table shows the total time it took Samir to read 0, 1, 2, and 3 pages of the book. The table also lists this information as ordered pairs as number of pages. So it's, the ratio is pages to minutes. Graph the ordered pairs and describe the pattern in the graph. Okay. So this is your ordered pair. 0, 0, 1, 4, 2, 8, 3, 12. So go, why don't you go ahead and graph that. Graph those four points on this coordinate plane. I'll give you a minute. Hey, Google, set a timer for one minute. Sure. One minute. Starting now. Hey Google, hey Google, stop. Okay, so if we were to graph these ordered pairs, right, just remember this is a number line that intersects with this number line, right? We've got X, we have Y. This is our origin right here. Okay, so our first point is zero, zero. So zero, zero is right here, right? Then we have one, four. So you're gonna always start with the X first. You're gonna go to your right. You're gonna go to one, and then you're going to go up to four. So we have to kind of guesstimate because we don't have a line there. Right? So we have one, four. We have two, eight. So we're going to start at the origin, go to two. We're going to go up to eight, which we don't have one. So we're going to guesstimate again. 
and then we have three 12. So we're going to start at the origin, go to three, go up to 12. We don't have 12, so we're going to have to guesstimate, right? And then we can take our ruler if you have one. Okay, so you get a line like that. Okay, so it says describe the pattern on the graph. Okay, so the graph, and if you notice here in your table, you have this, you have one to four. This is a unit rate, right? Okay, so for this changes by one increment and this changes by four, right? Four, eight, 12. Okay, so for every page, Every page uh, it takes four minutes. So every page uh, takes four minutes to read. And everything along this line is that same ratio. So you could go all the way up here and you go, well, four and 15 but it's not quite 15. But anything that's on this line is this same ratio. Okay, but just as you continue this table, you could continue the same. Okay, Ken's Home Supply charges $5 for each foot of fencing. Wayne's Warehouse charges $6 for every foot of fencing. Okay, so here's Ken's. Make a table for each store that shows the total cost for one, two, three, and four feet of fencing. List the information as ordered pairs, feet of fencing, total cost. So it's this is the format. This is your X, which is fencing, and your cost is Y, right? Which is what they have right here. So it's feet to cost. So if I do the first one, right? Ken's is $5 per foot and Wayne's is six dollars per foot okay so one foot costs five dollars my ordered pair is one five and if Wayne's it's one dollar and it's six dollars per foot so my ordered pair is one six so once you go ahead and complete both those ratio tables hey Google set a timer for two minutes all right two minutes Starting now. So finish both ratio tables, one for Kins, one for Wayne's. Hey, Google, stop. 
Okay, so if we were to finish this ratio table, right, we would find our next one by, because if you notice, this has a one, so this is a unit rate. Right, and this is also a unit rate. Okay, so to get my second one, that I have two of these, so two times five is 10. My uh, ordered pair is going to be two, 10. Next one, three, is going to be three times five, which is 15. So my ordered pair is three, 15. Number four is going to be four times five, which is 20, which is 420 is my ordered pair. Now I'm going to go over to Wayne's, right? And if I have two feet, it's $6 for one foot. So this is 12. My ordered pair is 212. Three times six is 18. My ordered pair is 318. And four feet of fencing times six is... 24, so my order pair is 424. Okay, it says predict the cost of each store for nine feet of fencing. Explain your reasoning. Okay, well, we know our unit, let's do this. Let's this say this is Ken's, and this is Wayne's. Okay, so we know our unit rate for Ken's is one. One foot is five dollars. Well, if I'm doing nine feet, that'll be nine times five, which is equal to forty-five. So it's forty-five dollars for nine feet. And for Wayne's, the same thing. My unit rate is six, so it's going to be nine times six. So my cost for nine feet is going to be fifty-four dollars. Okay. Okay, number four, graph the ordered pairs for each store on the same coordinate plane. Okay, so here's our coordinate plane. And I want you to go ahead and graph these four, graph, graph, plot, graph, plot, whatever, the same thing. These four points on this coordinate plane, and then plot these four on this coordinate plane, and then label them. What do your line for Ken and your line for Wayne. Okay. Hey Google, set a timer for two minutes. Oh, come on. Hey Google, set a timer for two minutes. All right, two minutes. Starting now. Yes, you can't hear me through the mask.
<laughs> hey Google, stop. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is Ken's, right? And I have these four points that I'm going to plot on my coordinate plane. So I'm going to go one five. So I'm going to start at my origin. I'm going to go to the right. I go one, and I'm going to go up to five. And I'm going to put a little dot right there. Okay, so that's done. My next one is 210, so I'm going to go to the right to 2. I'm going to go up to 10, so there's my next point. My next one is 315, so I'm going to go over to 3 and up to 15. A little dot right there. Then I want to go to 4 and 20, so I'm going to go over to 4, go up to 20. Okay, so those are my four points for Kins. Then I have to take a ruler. Right, and I'm going to line it up with my origin. Okay, so I know this line is represents the data in the table for Ken's. Okay, so now I'm going to plot Wayne's, right? So his ordered pair is one and six. Well, I don't have a six, so I'm just going to have to guesstimate. Then it's 2, 12, so I'm going to go to 2 and go up to 12, which is probably right about there. And then my next point is, starting at the origin, go to the right 3 and go up to 10, no, go up to 18. So 3 and 18, that's 15, 16, 17, 18. And then your next one is four. So I'm going to go to the right to four and up to 24. It's going to be a little less than 25. Okay. So I'm going to just take my ruler, line it up with my origin. And this is Wayne's. Okay. So the next one says using the tables, we did this, we did this. Using the tables and the graphs, write a few sentences comparing the rates of amount charged per foot of fencing for each store. How is this shown in the graph? Okay, so as the number, as the number, of feet increase as the number of feet increases the cost of wanes Uh, uh, cost of wanes, uh, as the number of feet increases, the cost of wanes, 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 increases at a faster rate. And you can see that in your table too, right? And this column here is your cost. You can see it goes 5, 10, 15, 20. Right? You look at Wayne's and it's going 6. Right here we have more. 12. It's increasing. 15, 18, 20, 24. Okay? So just by the table, you can see that by increasing feet, it, the cost increases at a faster rate. Faster rate than Ken's. Okay. And then if you look at the graph, right? Wayne's Wayne's cost has 
a steeper line than ten. So just by looking at the line, you can see that it's accelerating faster, right? So this cost is increasing. So your data from your table is being represented in your line. So just by looking at the graph, you can tell what's happening to the data. Okay. So go to 306. Okay. Number six. Oh. Justify, justifying, just, huh? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. It says, justify arguments. Patty's Pies made two peach pies using 10 cups of peaches. They made three pies with 15 cups of peaches. And they made four pies using 20 cups of peaches. Predict how many cups of peaches would be needed to make nine pies. Okay. Well, let's make a ratio table, right? <clears throat> so our relationship, right, is pies to cups, cups of peaches, right? So let's start off, we, they gave us two and 10. So we have two pies and 10 cups of peaches. Then we have three pies and 15 cups of peaches. Then we have four pies and 20 cups of peaches. Okay, and as you can see, we're, we're, this is increasing by one and this is increasing by five, right? Well, we can even go back and find out what our unit rate is. Because we could go and divide this by two and divide that by two. Well, two goes into two once and two goes into 10, five. So I know my unit rate is one pie to five cups of peaches. Yes, sure. So, Let's just continue our ratio table and maybe we can, get, we'll, we'll, we can get our answer, right? You could also, if you wanted to, since you know the unit rate, you could multiply nine times five and it would get your answer. But let's, let's, con, let's, let's complete the ratio table. So if we had five, we know this increases by five more. So this is 25. One more pi, it increases five more, that's 30. One more pi, that's seven, that's 35. Another pi, that's eight, that gives us 40. And another one, that's nine pies, that's 45. Okay, so we could get it both ways. We can continue our ratio table and gotten our answer, or we could have taken our unit rate which is one, two, five, and take in nine times five, which is equal to 45. Okay. Oh, okay, so seven. Use multiple representation. The golden rectangle is a rectangle in which the ratio of the length to the width is approximately 1.618 to 1. This ratio is called the golden ratio. Okay. I'd never heard of this before. Okay. So that Number A, table, make a ratio table to show the approximate lengths of the golden rectangles given widths that are one, two, three, and four units. List the information in order pairs as far as length and width, okay? So our width, we know, is one, 
two, three, and four. And they already told us that the original ratio is 1.618 to one. And so our ordered pair would be 1.618 to one. Okay. So all we're going to do is multiply two times this, right? And two, I'm going to do the math for you. It's 3.236 to two. And then we write, re, write our ordered pair is 3.236 to two. And then three times that, which would be 4.854. And then our ordered pair would be 4.854 to three. And four times 1.618 is 6.4. 7, 2, and our ordered pair would be 6.472, Okay, now it says graph the ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. Okay, now this is going to be a little tricky <coughs> because we have these decimal places, plus if you look at your graph, they have it rather spaced out, right? So there's, you're just going to be doing a little bit of guesstimating, right? But this is your width. So this number line is doing length. This is doing width, right? Okay, so let's try the first one. The first one is 1.618 to 1. So here's 2. So that has to be 1. So 1 1.6 would be like 1.5, right? So that's 1.52. And then this line is 1. So it's, I mean, I would guess it's right about there. And then your next number is 3.236 to 2. Okay, so I'm going to go over here. That's 2, that's 3, so it's 3.2. And we're going to go up to 2. So we're going to go up here, so it's right about there. All right, so we got that one. And then the next one is 4.854. So here's two, there's four. 4.8 is more than five, so that's halfway there. Wow, it's almost five. 4.8, 4 4.9, yeah, it's almost five. So we're gonna go up here and we're gonna go to three, which is this line right here. Okay, and then we've got 6.472, it's almost 6.5, so we go over here, here's 6, that's 7, 6.5 would be right here, and we'll go up to 4, so we'll put that right there. Okay, so we graphed our ordered pair. Analyze, how does the area of each rectangle change as the dimensions change? Okay, so basically they went and they calculate, they were comparing the area to the dimensions. And what you find out is that the area Uh, increases at a slower rate than then uh, the area increases at a slower rate than the um, 
dimensions, which are your length and your width. <clears throat> Dimension increase. Okay. That, that's kind of a hard one. Okay, so what time is it? I have 159. So uh, I'm, I want to save this for tomorrow to set you up for the quiz. So we'll do that tomorrow. But what I'd like to do for the rest of the period is I, I found this guy. I don't know if you've seen him on YouTube. His name is Arthur T. Benjamin. And he calls himself a math a magician. And he's a mathematician, but he's found some very interesting patterns on how numbers work. And so he has some, he has some, um, what, oh, that's a whole hour. I don't want to do a whole hour. Secrets. So he has, how to quickly, melt, uh, no, I want to find something easy. So he has all these different tricks to help you do mental math. Uh, uh, where is it? Grandpa was adding numbers. Secrets, math, it's an hour. Okay, well, we'll just start this, okay? You'll get the idea. We're not going to watch the whole thing. Well, I guess I could do this one. Let's do this one. Okay, we won't, we won't watch the whole thing. We don't have the time. What? Can you hear that? Yeah, this is terrible. Well, you know what? I didn't realize that was somebody's cell phone or whatever. That's terrible. He does this down here. Let's go down here to here. Uh, how to multiply. Uh, well, I'll watch this one first. Okay, we'll do this. I think this would be a better video. Welcome, everyone. My name is Arthur Benjamin. I am a mathematician. What that means is I combine my loves of math and into something I call Captain Magic. I'm going to do some mental math problems for you. Start off with some small problems and work our way up to some big problems. Um, I'll start by multiplying numbers by 11. Can you give us a two digit number multiplied by 11? I have here a someone with a giant calculator. He's my press the digitator. He's going to verify most of these. Okay, two digit number times 11 is 396. How about another two digit number? That's a 73 times 11 is 803. How about a three digit number? 489, that's 5,300. Right. The other thing I love doing is squaring them. Multiplying numbers by themselves. We'll start off easy with numbers that end in five. Give us a two-digit number that ends in five. Times sixty-five is four thousand two hundred twenty-five. How about a, another two-digit number? Thirty-five times itself is one thousand two hundred twenty-five. How about a three-digit number that ends in five? Three eighty-five is one hundred forty-eight thousand two hundred twenty-five. <laughs> I was 
joys of mental arithmetic that led to my becoming a professional mathematician and mathematician. I've written books and have given thousands of talks to audiences around the world on how to do math in your head. Confidence, accuracy, and speed, sometimes faster than a calculator. In this course, I will share all of my calculating techniques with you. In school, most of the math that we learn is done with pencil and paper. Yet, I would say that it's far more important to be able to do the math in your head without pencil, paper, or calculator. There are many situations where it makes more sense to do problems in your head, like when buying groceries, or reading a newspaper, or playing a game of Scrabble, or listening to sales figures in a meeting. The ability to do rapid mental calculation offers lifelong advantages. Students who master mental math have a competitive advantage in the classroom. Not only are these skills empowering, but thinkers with confidence in them can actually be a lot of fun. Over the years, I've received feedback from many parents who said that their son or daughter was poor in their math classes, either because it was too fast or too slow, but after learning my techniques, their attitude and performance improved dramatically. And anyone who learns to think about numbers as we do in this course, will approach more advanced math with better number sense and with more confidence and enthusiasm. It can also lead to higher standardized test scores on the SAT, ACT, and grad school exams. Some of these exams do not allow calculators, but even if they do, an improved sense of numbers will reduce the chance of making yeah. calculation error. It makes it easier to check on the titles. Sure. These are useful skills. Life, whether you're using them at the ATM machine, shooting the tip at a restaurant, or shopping for a mortgage at the car loan. As we get older, research has shown that it's more important to find activities to keep your mind active and sharp. Not only does mental math sharpen the mind, I think it makes you a better problem solver. Our first six lectures will focus on the fun of mental also explore real world applications of these techniques, as well as the art of guesstimation, problems that do not require the exact answer. Mm -hmm. Once we have mastery of the basics, we we'll branch out in interesting oh, directions. Oh. We we'll devote one lecture to yeah. pencil Whenever and paper I click on it, just this and show the way we are seldom taught in school of the absolutely natural world. I'll show you a fun uh, way to improve your memory uh, for numbers, which will allow us to perform even larger mental calculations that can also be used oh, to perform so the math well known credit card. Yes, please. Yeah, I'll do that. And speaking of ways, I'll teach you my methods of determining the day of the week, the day of the month, and the day of the year. Now, the Okay, so we'll, we'll, I'll pick some more select air, some of his techniques and we'll start doing that. Okay, so my online people, you may log off, go to period seven. I'll go, I'll go.